Thank you. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And boy, how can I follow that? Um, thanks, Camilo. Um, we're here today. Cleveland Jobs with Justice is here today to, to tell you that we are standing with you. Um, we, I, I have to tell you a little story. Uh, just the other night, I was at a um, another function, and I was listening to a candidate for uh, Cleveland Municipal Judge talk about what she had just accomplished, and she was really proud of this. Her feathers were all fluffed, and she was really proud of the fact that she had just sentenced a couple of people for breaking into an abandoned house and stealing the little weights that were in the windows for scrap. And she just put these people into jail because they had just broken into these abandoned houses and stole these weights for scrap. And she was really proud about that. And unfortunately, I, because I was in a different role, I couldn't speak up. But there were several people in the crowd that did groan when she said that. And it wasn't groan because they were also proud like she was. And unfortunately, she really didn't get it. That you know what? Those people broke into those houses and had to steal those weights because they were desperate. And that's what this Occupy movement is about because right now we're standing in a city, and I don't know how many of you know that, but we are the third, third poorest city in the nation. We used to be the top manufacturing city in the nation, and we are now the third poorest city in the nation. And we have to do something about that. It's time that we can, or we need to continue talking about that. We need to continue occupying. So we're standing behind you because we have to keep it in the streets. And I am all about standing up, speaking out, occupying, doing what it needs to be done, taking back our country because that's the only way this is going to happen. We stand with you. We're going to stand with you until this is over. You know, we're already making plans about a poverty summit in February and while we were doing that planning at the meeting the other day, we were talking about the Occupy movement. So we're planning on you still being here in February. So you know what? We're going to be with you. We're going to do what it takes to keep this movement going. And you know what? Wouldn't it be great if one day that we could all join hands from New York, Boston, all the way across the country out to California and we could occupy this whole country. So let's go people and let's stay with it. And we love you and we're with you. And thank you very much. And occupy the world too. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit here and uh, play a little music for you guys. Uh, then next on the docket following that, we have uh, Michelle Mayen from National Nurses United um, and also Harriet Applegate from the AFL-CIO. All right, so bear with us while we get a quick setup here. We're going to pound some music out, make some noise, let them know we're out here. Thank you all. Corporations are very involved in the war machine because the industrial part is now a supreme influence on the U.S. military budget. Which We're going to do a little music for you guys. My name is Loki. This is Borza. He's got a little political song he wants to do for y'all. And then I have some feel-good tunes about good vibrations and love and togetherness that we're going to stick together and get this ball rolling, y'all. Thank you guys for coming out and supporting today. Occupy Cleveland. <laughs> power if we started building windmills in 1980 when our groups were protesting we'd have more windmills what I came to say really quickly today driving down here on public radio they replayed the city club there's a dr. Gail Christensen I think is her name she was on it's one of the greatest most powerful talks I've heard on public radio they're gonna rebroadcast it tomorrow on 90.3 and then on WVIZ I think at 1 o'clock, maybe in the morning tomorrow, but her topic was race, poverty, 
the crisis economically with health and the children. She's from a Kellogg Foundation, and they're trying to get to the children. The children of the poor are being deprived health care that leads to diabetes and strokes and all that, which is breaking our budget as they get older, and is all tied to, she says, the history of this country, 300 years of racial oppression has carried through till now. We do not live in a post-racial society. We live in a society where there's a standard for those people with money for health care and those people on the bottom. And these children, if they don't get care uh, at age three, they go to school behind and then they fall behind. And that sets this society where there are two levels. And so I really hope that everybody goes home and tries to catch the City Club, which they rebroadcast tomorrow, and then they'll rebroadcast it on Sunday. It's a very, very powerful talk on the subject of why we're here. So I really think that's important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Loki, back up. Yeah. All right, everybody. Yeah. To be out here. So I just want to say we've been out here for 15 days holding this space so that this is possible. Because what happening right now is not just 15 people or 20 people or 50 people camping out on the streets. We're holding a space because right now this is becoming a movement. That's what's happening. And I just want to say thanks because we just got an amazing anonymous donation to those who are staying out. We just got four month-long RTA passes. So occupiers, we can sometimes go to our homes or go out to different neighborhoods and get the word out about what we're doing. So thank you, thank you for supporting our movement because it is our movement. All right, I say occupy, you say Cleveland, occupy. you feel like making will go to the 99 percent we're gonna end it with this trip that was Zoki. that man is intense i love that you know don't be afraid to dance um, next up we have deborah van cleef and she's about to sing some songs and continue to hold this uh, celebratory vibe let's continue celebrating freedom okay that was great, Loki. So I was listening. Uh, I was listening to the human microphone and thinking, you know, this is something new, um, like this movement, and it's also something very ancient. Um, there's a there's a long tradition in um, African American and many other cultures of call and response. So I'm going to do a call and response song. I'm going to teach you your part. I'm going to sing this. I'm going to sing. Ain't you got a ride? And you're going to sing. Ain't you got a Ain't you got a right? 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 To the tree of life, to the tree of life. We'll do it a couple times till you get it. Ain't you got a right? 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 To the tree of life, to the tree of life, ain't you got a right? 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 Ain't you got a right to the tree of life, to the tree of life. Now, if they're gonna hear you in Washington, if they're gonna hear you in the towers where the bankers are, you gotta sing loud. I'm gonna sing some different. All right, let's give a round of applause right here. An occupier writing music for the movement. Quick announcement, you see some t-shirts going around, 99percentunited.com. Eli Cook, you see him over here with the Occupy Cleveland. Eli, give a big wave. He's making our t-shirts, Occupy Cleveland. Visit 99percentunited.com to get an Occupy Cleveland t-shirt. All right, 
Next on the docket, we have a really wonderful speaker here who's been a huge ally to this movement. Uh, Michelle Mayen has been down here advising us with first aid. She's brought us supplies. She has helped all of us occupiers who've been on the streets of Cleveland for the past 15 days. Staying healthy, staying comfortable. From National Nurses United, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Mayen. I'm so happy to see everybody out here supporting this movement. America's nurses support Occupy Cleveland, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Cincinnati, Occupy everywhere. We are out there. We've got first aid tents on Wall Street. We've got them everywhere. We've got them up in LA. We've got them in Seattle, San Antonio. We're just everywhere. We love this movement. The reason a lot of people want to know, well, what in the world do, does Wall Street have to do with nursing? And I'll tell you what, it has everything to do with nursing. Nurses have been on the front lines caring for our patients and for our communities for a very long time. We were on the battlefields of the Civil War, World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, and we are in Iraq and Afghanistan today. We are also on the front lines of this battle, the one here at home, the one that we are all here to fight. We are fighting for dignity. We are fighting for each other. We are here because homeless shelters and food kitchens should not be the fastest growing businesses in America. We are here because we believe everybody deserves a home. Everybody deserves a job. Everybody should have that right. Everybody has the right to drink clean water. We all Them. Stand up for each other, for ourselves, and for the nation that we can be. We cannot stand idly by alone in our living rooms anymore. It is time for us to get out of there and nurse each other, take care of each other. We are seeing so many people fighting. Labor is fighting issue two. We have nurses and all kinds of people fighting for the uninsured. We're fighting for health care reforms. We're fighting for all kinds of things. We're fighting for homes to fix the homeless. And all of these problems have have one thing in common, and that is that there are some people, the 1%, who would choose to take all the things that we that make our life wonderful away from us. Work harder, work longer, do more, get rid of more. You've got enough. It's time to stop looking at what is what the problems that are created and blaming each other. It's time to say, we're in this together and it's not our fault. It's Wall Street's fault. That's right, it's greed's fault. And we are not a greedy society. It is time to stand up and take it back. We need to stand together. Nurses have one, one solution. We've been demonstrating on Wall Street since June. We've been in all of our congressional districts across the country, and we want to say tax Wall Street. Let's not the whole solution, but tax it. Let's get some of that money back. It's ours. We deserve it. We can build jobs with it. We can take care of the sick with it, and we can provide homes with it. We will do a better job with that money than Wall Street. Let's have it. Give it. Take it back. 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 I just have one thing to let you guys know about. October 29th, the entire Occupy movement around the world, Occupy Together, Occupy Global, will have the Global National Day of Action for the Robin Hood Tax. And the Robin Hood Tax is a tax on gambling on Wall Street, and we want it to pass. Our nurses are going to Cannes, France. They are going to protest outside the G20. We are going to be in Washington, D.C., and we're going to say, give us our money back. October 29th, across the world, Robin Hood tax. November 3rd, Washington, D.C., Cannes, France. I want to see everybody out on the streets. Turn off the TV and get out here. Hey, hey.